Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Friday, and boy, we had a busy week this week. We were all over the place, had a lot going on, you know, between going to Elephant's Trunk last week, and then we had our Long Island tool meet where we went, uh, uh, it was on Wednesday, and uh, we had, it was a little bit shy turnout as far as vendors go. You know, it's always, uh, it's a funny thing, you know, some weeks, you, sometimes you get a lot of people go up there to sh to buy, and sometimes a lot of people to sell, but uh, we had a great time because everybody was, we were chatting a lot, and everybody was talking, and just a good time, you know, always a, a lot of fun over there, and I picked up a couple things, and then um, this week, I also got an email from our buddy Scott, Scott um, in Denver, Colorado, and uh, Scott was the one that led us on to the uh, Surplus Tools and Commodities place in Denver, and he was nice enough to go back there, and then it was funny because it turns out uh, a bunch of subscribers visited uh, the, the place, and they picked up a bunch of stuff. They bought out the rest of those channel lock grips. I mean, it was just, and the guy, obviously the owner, was very, uh, very happy, knows who Scott is, knows who we are. And uh, Scott shot a little bit more uh, video, and I'm, I'm able to say it was a beautiful video. I just want to give you a little bit extra look of the kind of stuff they have and the prices they have, and why I'm telling you, if you're in the area, close enough, a couple hours away, just take the trip. Take the trip and bring some cash. Let's check it out what Scott sent, the video. New old stock channel lock. You gotta get here. Now, wasn't that great? Now, if you're like me, you could spend hours going through all those nooks and crannies and boxes. And you gotta remember, they've been there since 1947. There's stuff that they don't even know they have and priced back like 20, 30 years ago. Did you see those speed bars for like $3? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> you, you should be going there buying that whole box and then putting them on eBay. You're making some some ching, you know, some ching ching. <laughs> anyway, uh, Scott, thanks so much for sending that. He went there with his dad. They had a great time again. Uh, uh, just a lot of fun, right? So uh, if you're in the area, stop by there. And also tell the owner that you heard about us, that you heard about them from uh, our channel. Because every time that another, you know, uh, one of us, the subscriber or one of our group goes there, I'm sure they're going to be more uh, accessible to uh, to show you different things and, you know, know that you're not just off the street, you know, that you're coming there to buy. So mention it. Mention the channel. Mention that, you know, you're there to, to, to spend some money. They love that. Okay, next up, I did say I picked up a couple things. Let's go check out some of the cool things I picked First up. First up, take a look at this beautiful Emberry uh, lantern. It's probably an air pilot from Warsaw, New York. I love these. They always one of oh, it's a little air pilot, so they did make a bigger one. Always one of my favorite style lanterns. Love this color. Love the red globe, especially when it's an original globe. 
At $25, how could you pass? The best part is it's never been fired. And how you check that is you lift up the globe here. You always look at the burner. The burner, the wick, it's all original, never been fired. And you always look at the top here, and you can see there's no soot up there. It's just, that was a score and a half. I love these lanterns. Such a pretty lantern, such pretty colors. And the red globe with the green, perfect. Next up, I picked this up at... Uh, at the uh long island meet and uh it was the same dealer i got the the scissors in the bag for twenty dollars uh this is a pair of wish 22s and these were super sharp i don't think these had much use other than you know the uh, the, the, the just sitting there but uh very sharp i mean i felt them right away i said geez these don't even feel like they were used nice pair of wish and look at this here now I wanted something. I said I need a uh, something to put my drill. You know, the Black and Decker one we just uh, we just cleaned up, and I said this would be a good bag for that drill. Now, this here is you can see it's a, a heavy duty, you know, heavy leather bag, and the guy says it was a machinist bag and stuff. But you can see here, this is going to be a heck of a job. It's very stiff. You can feel. Very stiff, kind of hard, but everything's intact. No rips, no tears. The threads are good. Uh, I, You know, I've done a lot of leather work in my past. I can get this to where it's nice. So this will be a nice project. That's a nice bag. And, uh, you know, a lot more expensive than most people think. Okay, last up, I paid stupid money for this thing. And it's because, I don't know why, I just I had to have it. This is just, I know there's one guy out there, my buddy Scott from Scott's Tool Thoughts. I know... He's the only other guy out there that's probably going to understand me for this. He he does, uh, his job is low current uh, installations, things like that, you know, and alarms and, and TV systems and stuff. And do you remember the old TV repairmen? They used to have a box like this. Now, this one, he says, says, we use RCA tubes, right, on one side. And on the other side, it says expert color, and it's written in color, color TV service. Now... This is what a professional would bring to your house, you know, when they would, and this is, this box was, you know, somebody's pride and joy back then. It's a nice box. And like I said, I paid, the guy wanted $50, 50 bucks, right? And I don't know, I was crying for a while and I was bay. I got it for 40, but, uh, uh, just let me show you how cool this is. Now to open the box, it's got two like, you know, trunk latches up here on top. And then it opens up almost like clamshell like, but look, it's got the original, it's the wood. And it's got 199 written here in yellow. So you know these were like individually made. And I'm sure the 199 on both sides was so that they would match when they were making a couple of these. That's what you did. And uh, you, it has a smell of age. And look, it has the aluminum, aluminum, uh, you know, containers that, you know, again, it didn't have to be heavy duty because you weren't putting heavy tools up here. Mostly you tubes, things like that. In the bottom, you would have more area for tools and you know, it's it's wood inside, and it's got a compartment over here. Is that not cool? And you could see this is almost like this was all handmade stuff. This wasn't off the shelf stuff. Plant this. This had to all be bent. Somebody, somebody in a shop made these boxes for the uh, the RCA guys. What do you think of that? You think that's pretty interesting? Because like I said, I I definitely overpaid for it. <laughs> You know, that is so cool. You'll never see this again. This is back in the day when you had TV repairmen come to the house because we had those huge console TVs that you ain't going to bring that out to get it fixed. You had to have a guy come in. Now, they throw TVs out if they go bad. Okay, next up, my uh, buddy Armando Loney has a uh, been running a contest for the last couple of years of uh, Halloween-themed uh, uh, wrench or tool or something to... Uh, to get us uh, back in the shop and kind of uh, do a little bit of a challenge. And uh, for this year, I had a particular wrench picked out, uh, a nice Lawson that I wanted to show you. And I wanted to do something with that wrench. Uh, basically, I wanted to spray it in Halloween colors. And I was trying to come up with a different thing. I've always loved the color combination of orange and black. It's such a great combination. I think I got my love of that started with black bear lubricants that used to be their color scheme and i have a nos unused uh can nos can up in my attic that uh that i got from somebody that worked at uh, black bear i love it and uh so i wanted to do that in this these colors let's go check out the wrench 
and get right into Armando's challenge. Okay, this is the wrench in question. You can see that it's an offset pipe wrench uh, invented by Gottfried Lawson. You can see here. Uh, in 1920, he invented this wrench, and uh, it is a, a well, uh, well-made, well-used wrench. Back in the day, there's still plenty of these around. It's uh, it's attractive looking. It's it's a very nice wrench, and and, and it was produced by four companies actually, because they kept uh, after the patent ran out, another company, another company. So these were there's thousands and thousands of these around. Um, this particular one was $5 I paid. It's a 10-inch wrench. They also made an 8-inch version. Just a beautiful-looking wrench, but there's so many variable uh, uh, things that we could do with this wrench, and it does have a nice wide handle. It's drop-forged. Um, I am going to show you, like I said, it is made by uh, a bunch of different companies. Uh, Fairmont made a lot of these. This one here was U.S. You can see here, U-H-S, U-S-H Co. Can you see that there? U-S-H. H Co. And there's a very interesting story behind now, that. The USH stands for United States Haim, H A M E Company, C O. And uh, they were out of uh, New York. This here is from Buffalo, New York. A lot of these ranches were made in Cleveland, Ohio. But um, the uh, Haim Company, which was very interesting, they used to make uh, products for, uh, for uh, oxen and, and horses. And uh, they were two wooden things that went around the horse's neck to help uh, pull carts and things like that. And as time was going on, they wanted to get away from the kind of the horse business and they wanted to get more into modern things. So they started producing bodies for automobiles, the woodies that we're familiar with. And also they were producing wrenches and things like that. And uh, they were quite successful. U.S.H. Co. You'll see that a lot of times. So anyway, let's get this to the wire brush. Take a look and see if there's any hidden surprises we have to deal with. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, here we are at a post wire brush evaluation and you know what I have to tell you you know I always say my favorite tool era is the 1920s they really had great steel virgin steel and they also had uh, the fit and finish was was better than most uh, eras so here you could see here the top you know how a lot of times you top you don't look what a nice job this is just a wire brush and look what a nice job they did from the factory of getting that nice right now when you wire brushing no sense in wasting your time trying to go deep on the sides here because remember uh you're going to be hitting that with the grinder anyway but you can see here there's the buffalo new york usa and uh okay ush co uh manufacturing okay you see over here and i th was mistaken i thought they only made two sizes uh t eight and ten but they do have a 14 this is the 14 that I found when I was uh, doing the wire brushing. Now, again, spend all the time wire brushing in here because you can't do any of that grinding. Don't waste your time trying to wire brush too much the top because we're going to get that forge line out of there. Even though it's it's visible, it's still smooth. So, again, they did a good job. But there is some pitting. We got some, you know, the pitting the around the top of the ranch and you know, over here, and you know how it's, this is typical of years and years of sitting and neglect, but spend your time with the wire brush on the knurling knob, because you can't do anything with that other than wire brush, and look how nice that came out. Again, get the Dremel, go on the inside of the threads, get the, all the rust out of there, all the rust out of the insides and everything, you know, that's important. Now, we'll go to the grinder. Okay, and here's our pre-paint evaluation. Now, a lot of people that are purists would like to just stop here, and that's fine. That's what's so beautiful about this hobby. And remember, anytime you add paint to a wrench, 
it's the easiest thing to take off. You could take any paint off in five minutes. It never hurts or harms the wrench. In fact, it protects it better than anything else. A coat of paint protects the wrench. Five minutes to take off. I love to buy old painted wrenches. You could see here, uh, this had this little thumb groove on both sides, which is a little bit of a challenge to get into, but you can see we did nice satin finish all the way around. Works beautiful, you know, just the way it was. Look at that. Just, and I didn't get to polish yet. That polish is the last thing we'll do, but we, uh, it's raining out. I don't want to do the paint. You see, it's got that kind of rough, that finish, that forge finish in there, which a lot of people like. It's, uh, but we're going to do some color for the, uh, Armando contest. So that's what we're at now. Isn't that pretty? What a beautiful looking wrench, right? Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this Lawson wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. This is my entry into Armando's Halloween entry. And the reason this one is a Halloween wrench for me is because of the black and orange. Okay, so on this side, we have our black with the lettering. You can see here all done. And on this side, bam. We have the drop forged in black and orange over here, USA painted, and uh, what a nifty little wrench. And you know, this is always good if you wanted to see what color you'd like a wrench in or whatever. This one again, like I said, this is the, the orange side, and then if you like the black side. Uh, the traditional Halloween colors here. Let me show you the, uh, the metal, how that came out. Look at how beautiful. What a nice finish we got on here. Look at the top here. That is just lovely, isn't it? The whole sides. Remember the forging lines that were down? And the back. Everything just came out super nice. Uh, super smooth. I mean, look at that. It's like glass. Now, there was always a little bit of slop in this wrench. It was designed to do this. That's not, that's built into there because it's got, you know, grooved out that it's meant so that it will grip the wrench. The teeth on the jaws on this particular wrench are absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Just really nice. And, uh, you know, this was a, a nice wrench. And Lawson, they, they made a good looking wrench, again, with their lettering in there. And uh, I tried to take off the top of the lettering. You can see a little bit. And uh, and on this side, you know, the drop forge I did in the, uh, the black. But, uh, yeah, the Halloween Armando Loney challenge entry i like it nice little wrench you could display it either way when you get tired of displaying it <laughs> this way you could turn it around and display the orange side so there we go so in closing this was a jam-packed episode and i i still didn't put in all the stuff that i had to uh to that i wanted to but anyway we're running a little bit long i hope you have a great day enjoy your weekend check out armando's channel i'll have the link in the description thanks so much take care bye bye